Uh, I'm going to talk about climate change adaptation and uh, use of climate agrometeorological information to, to support uh, this adapt adaptation planning. I'm a climatologist by training and uh, I, I started working on agricultural issues uh, since I joined FAO. And my personal mission is to bridge the gap between the science and policy, uh, which resonates very well with the mission of APCC and this conference uh, on climate uh, symposium as part of the Food Security Week of APEC, I believe. <clears throat> um, I want to talk about transformational climate change adaptation. Uh, I use this word transformational because that's becoming a, a, a key word uh, in the climate change uh, uh, domain, particularly those, uh, those of us who are working hard to help developing countries to cope with the climate change impacts in the sector and to mitigate climate change by reducing greenhouse gas emissions. <clears throat> um, you have heard about Green Climate Fund, uh, probably, uh, which is uh, going to be the biggest funding opportunities for many countries in the region to address uh, climate change challenges. Uh, there have been billions of billions of money made available over the coming years. Um, the, the fund is uh, designed to address the medium to long-term climate change uh, problems. Uh, so taking beyond what we are used to doing in climate uh, problems, addressing extreme weather events and the current climate variability, but, look, uh, but also looking over uh, a much longer time scale, 10, 20 years and uh, up to mid-century and beyond uh, where climate information is uh, uh, becoming more and more important. <clears throat> um, Green Climate Fund is looking to fund uh, truly climate change projects. Uh, if you look around the world, there are many so-called climate change projects. But if you look closely, many of them are disguised as climate change projects. It's, uh, uh, it may be just ordinary development project, uh, but just because climate change is a, a big opportunity to get funding, the project developers are trying to characterize a normal climate uh, development project as a climate change project. Uh, Green Climate Fund does not welcome such project proposals. They are truly uh, looking for uh, problem, uh, projects that are designed to address climate change adaptation and climate change mitigation. Um, also, they, they would like for the projects to, to not to be a one-time investment on, a, on, a, on infrastructure or any other uh, uh, interventions, but uh, they would like this to be uh, more sustainable changes uh, to make significant impact in the countries. So the world is transformational uh, or paradigm shift. 
these are the worlds that climate, Green Climate Fund and other uh, donors are starting to use when designing uh, uh, the next climate change projects. And of course, we, we need to have an element of innovation. We have heard about many uh, uh, innovative ideas yesterday and particularly today from uh, uh, different institutions uh, using uh, ICT or Internet of Things and other technologies to, to innovative technologies to improve uh, food security. Uh, I, some of them are so sophisticated that I, I could not imagine yet in applying uh, uh, those technologies in the countries I, I used to work a lot, like in Africa. Uh, I would like, uh, uh, the, but these, these innovative technologies, I would like them to be become more accessible for smallholder farmers uh, in the next five, 10 years. <clears throat> um, so now I'm, I, I'm going to talk more about the, the, the elements that would support uh, designing and implementing transformational changes uh, in climate change adaptation. Um, I argue that the, the, the projects, the programs, and policies are, are need to be evidence-based, and they need to be well linked with uh, policies at the international, national, and uh, smaller scales. Uh, there has to be an element for encouraging and making possible scaling up uh, to larger uh, areas or other subsectors or replication in neighboring uh, areas and countries. Uh, another element is capacity development. The, the capacities of countries and all uh, everybody who is involved needs to be developed so that uh, eventually the overseas aid, uh, development aid would not be necessary and uh, the countries can, can uh, uh, be on track for on its own development pathway. And uh, in order to make it possible, there needs to be an uh, enabling environment to support these uh, uh, elements. First, I'm going to talk more about evidence-based uh, uh, adaptation. I emphasize that uh, any climate change adaptation program project should be supported by robust evidences. And there are many types of evidences uh, that could support climate change adaptation. I made a, 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 a list, uh, I, I categorized different types of evidences, and uh, I have made a short list. The first uh, type of evidence is about uh, what happened in the past, past uh, climate uh, trend variability, and how that impacted local agriculture. Uh, uh, and uh, how including these extreme events, but also the mean changes in climate and uh, interannual variation like uh, ENSO related impacts. The next type of uh, evidence is uh, looking into the future. Future projected uh, climate, uh, climate change scenarios, and how this uh, changing climate may affect agriculture. <clears throat> we have seen uh, uh, some research results in this symposium about this type of evidence. 
uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about it in my uh, presentation too. Um, taking more socioeconomic uh, uh, look at the, the problem, uh, the next type of evidence is about characterizing vulnerability to climate change. Uh, often the vulnerability of smallholder farmers are affected uh, by uh, socioeconomic factors, more by socioeconomic factors uh, than by uh, climate factors. So climate factor may be just one, one uh, uh, problem in uh, the local livelihood. We need to take a holistic look at the vulnerability uh, when we talk about uh, uh, the food security of farming communities. Although my work is more on uh, adaptation, and uh, many of the countries in APEC, APEC and the, the developing countries uh, FAO work with is not a major emitter of greenhouse gas emissions. So I, I think adaptation is the primary concern for, for these countries. But whenever we, we promote a certain adaptation practices, we need to make sure that uh, that does not have any significant adverse impacts uh, in, in terms of greenhouse gas emissions. So we, uh, whenever possible, we encourage to seek synergies between adaptation and mitigation in the agriculture sector, even if it's an uh, adaptation project. <clears throat> And then uh, uh, when we design uh, projects, programs, and policies, we need to identify which adaptation practices may be more suitable in a particular local area or particular subsector or ecosystem or watershed, basins, etc. And we need to make assessments or appraisal of these potential uh, adaptation practices in, in, in a variety of ways. Uh, you could do that in a field trial, if it's uh, introduction of new varieties of a crop, or you could run uh, econometric analysis on, on, the, on the desk to assess uh, uh, the efficacy of practices or you can do cost-benefit analysis, or you can run crop modeling models or other biophysical models uh, to evaluate the potential adaptation practices ex ante uh, before the project uh, and uh, when it's designed and when it's uh, before it's implemented. <coughs> um, yes. We need to uh, we need to we need to have some kind of evidence to justify yes this is uh, the uh, uh, a good adaptation practice in this local area uh, 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 in order for the, the climate change project to be uh, 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 to be endorsed by the, the, the project formulators and donors. <coughs> And then once the project uh, starts to be implemented, then uh, the, uh, we need to monitor and evaluate the, how, how it is going, uh, effective, how the adap chosen adaptation practices, if it's working well or not. Uh, this constant monitoring and evaluation uh, is necessary, and that's a, a variable information to make the next interventions, next projects better. Uh, and all of these things uh, need climate uh, information. Like this, this last uh, uh, one, effectiveness of adaptation interventions, you may 
uh, the climate information needs to be used to set the baseline or reference level to, to truly evaluate if the climate uh, adaptation practices uh, worked or not. So we have a, a baseline scenario without uh, intervention, but under the effects of climate change and, uh, and the project outcome with the interventions, but still under the effects of climate change. Their climate information is also uh, necessary. Um, I'm going to talk uh, from here on, I'm going to talk a little more about this uh, future projection of climate and uh, its impact on agriculture. And taking the example of a uh, 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 tool that uh, FAO developed since uh, five, six years ago called Mosaic. It's an uh, integrated modeling system for assessment of impacts of climate change on agriculture and food security. Uh, and it's a collaborative platform that uh, brings together different disciplines, uh, numerical models under one hood. <clears throat> the next point about the, the elements that may support transformational changes uh, is the link, linkages with uh, policies. When we work on the project, and particularly uh, implementing Mosaic uh, tool in a new country, we, we try to aim to contribute to national policy planning pro processes uh, on climate change, agriculture, and food security. There are many policy processes. Uh, one example is national adaptation plan, uh, which uh, was uh, decided in uh, Cancun uh, Climate Change uh, Conference uh, a few years ago. And now uh, every country has uh, uh, designed or in the process of designing and implementing national adaptation plans. Uh, uh, we call it NAP, uh, which is different from uh, another similar process uh, called NAPA, National Adaptation Plan of action, which was designed to address more short-term uh, uh, climate challenges. Instead, National Adaptation Plan, NAP, is for addressing medium and long-term uh, climate change problems. Climate Smart Agriculture, we have heard about this uh, uh, concept in uh, with, uh, presentation by a Vietnamese colleague uh, this morning. We, uh, FAO, is actively promoting uh, CSA, which uh, promotes uh, sustainable increase of agriculture production, making sure both uh, climate change adaptation and mitigation is uh, uh, addressed. Agriculture investment plans, uh, 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 countries own investment plans or uh, with donors like uh, World, World Bank or IFAD, International for Fund for Agriculture Development. Uh, uh, this long-term investment plan needs to be anchored uh, with climate uh, change information. National climate change policies, every country now has more or less uh, uh, climate change policies that cuts across different sectors. NDC, or Nationally Determined Contribution, which is submitted by every country who has uh, signed uh, Paris Agreement. <clears throat> and national communications to UNFCCC. This is uh, periodic reporting by uh, countries, like non-annex one countries to the UNFCCC needs to submit the national communications every four years or so. Uh, all of these uh, uh, policy processes uh, need to have climate change impacts vulnerability information. <clears throat> and uh, the academic studies 
I argue that uh, should consider that uh, uh, if your research is uh, relevant to these kinds of policy processes, uh, in order for your research work to have the, the highest impact uh, on the society. The next point is about scaling up and replication. Um, in, the, in the work by us uh, using Mosaic, we focus on national level assessments of climate change impacts with sub-national disaggregation because we have seen that it's a uh, 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 information gap in many countries. There are many global uh, graded assessments or regional, meaning the mul multiple countries or continental scale assessments or very small scale field level, village level assessments in the experimental farm, for example. But uh, there's still an information gap at national level and subnational disaggregation that may be of high interest to policymakers in the country. Uh, this type, this uh, spatial scale, uh, makes it possible to highlight the different adaptation needs within the country. So, in the in, in the mosaic tool and uh, the projects uh, we implemented this tool. Uh, we worked in a number of countries. Uh, many of them are actually uh, APEC economy, like Philippines, uh, uh, Peru, <coughs> Indonesia. Uh, but uh, uh, lately we are working uh, more and more in African countries too. <coughs> we uh, emphasize interdisciplinary approach because the challenge of climate change in the agriculture sector and for food security uh, cuts across different, many different disciplines. Actually, I have to say that I'm a little bit disappointed by the, the scope of the, the presentations uh, we have heard so far because it's mostly looking at crops and crops only, but uh, FAO's interest is much larger. Food security involves many other subsectors, livestock, uh, fisheries, aquaculture, forestry, uh, in order for a more comprehensive approach, landscape approach to address this uh, global challenge. Uh, but the same criticism goes uh, to my work too, because the mosaic tool uh, I am talking about is only looking at crops and uh, river water availability and uh, forest landscape. Uh, we hear many requests from the, the government officials. Uh, when I talk about this too, they want to look at the impacts on uh, animal health, animal productivity, what about the, the forage, the grassland productivity, what's going to happen to the coastal fisheries uh, uh, potential under climate change effects. Those, there are many, many interests out there. But uh, I, I have an impression that much of the climate change work in the sector is uh, focusing on crops and uh, uh, very few in other subsectors. So this is an area that we need to work harder uh, in the next decade, I think. So Mosaic integrates uh, uh, some of the subsectors, uh, crops, forest, uh, river water, in, in one, one modeling package uh, with a central database that facilitates exchange of data between different uh, disciplines models uh, easier than, than before. Capacity development is the next uh, element that, that would support transformational changes. We uh, promote a uh, more country-driven approach. We would like the countries to strengthen their capacities 
uh, so that uh, they can, the, the national scientists can do the climate change impacts and vulnerability assessments themselves uh, using their country's own data and for the country's own benefit, uh, filling the information needs and gaps in their own country. So, uh, so we, we emphasize this country-driven approach in all uh, installation implementation of Mosaic 2. We think this is important, uh, that, that these capacities need to be, should be internalized within the country because uh, climate change adaptation is not a one-off exercise. It needs to have uh, a long-term planning. It needs these policies for adaptation is iterative, needs to be revised every few years to consider new scientific information to take into account the successes and failures of the ongoing uh, uh, adaptation projects and, uh, and then uh, uh, revise the strategies, designs of projects uh, for the next round to do it better. Uh, for, for in order for this uh, uh, cycle to be functional, the countries need to have its, uh, their own capacities. So in, in Mosaic implementation, we give a series of training workshops. Uh, we chose the participating models to Mosaic, a simple and robust one, which requires minimum data input so that uh, uh, the scientists uh, can, can learn how to use the data relatively easily. So typically, one module of Mosaic uh, uh, training is uh, one week long. And after the, the training workshops, uh, the trained national scientists uh, continue to be supported by international experts so that the, the domestic experts can run the simulations and write up the reports. Uh, and, and those processes, the whole process is supported by FAO and international scientists. The last point is the enabling environment. Um, we, we work a lot to involve all the, the concerned associated stakeholders in, in, in the project. We, uh, when we implement Mosaic, the first thing we do is to assess the current knowledge information gaps and uh, uh, capacity gaps and understand the roles of different uh, national institutions within the country. And then we form an interdisciplinary technical working group which consists of scientists uh, of different disciplines, uh, data providers, uh, this can be a National Weather Bureau or uh, Agriculture Ministry or National Statistics Office, because we often use uh, uh, census data uh, and agricultural statistics. And then most importantly, we also welcome policy makers who have some understanding of the technical issues to be part of the interdisciplinary technical working group so that they can guide the design of academic uh, climate change impact studies from policy Maker, uh, taking into consideration the policymaker's point of view so that the, the academic study they produce is not going to be uh, 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 stay just as an academic paper in a scientific journal, but actually uh, can be considered in formulating climate change adaptation projects and the programs in the country. Uh, typically, we invite the Ministry of Agriculture, it usually the main counterpart, but also uh, uh, Met Office, uh, Ministry of Environment, Ministry of Forestry, different ministries uh, take part. Uh, in the end, uh, well, it, this stakeholder involvement, is, it takes a long time 
uh, easily half a year, or maybe sometimes we take uh, one year to, to, to make sure that uh, all uh, consultations are made uh, to identify the members of the technical working group. But in the end, the, the academic studies, the impact assessment studies, are true, become truly informative uh, product at the end of the project. So these are the typically the, the, the diagram of uh, participating institutions uh, in a typical implementation of mosaic in a, in a country. <clears throat> Um, some results uh, from the, the cases uh, that of mosaic implementation in a, in a country in the past. This is from uh, uh, the Philippines, uh, the, the, the result of uh, river simulation models. Uh, in, in this study, we found that uh, towards the mid, middle of the century, uh, Philippines become more wetter and uh, hence the river water is more abundant, but uh, inter, uh, intra-seasonal variability increases too. So it's not, it doesn't necessarily mean that all the extra precipitation may be utilized for agricultural purposes. But uh, this kind of national study highlights uh, and, and answer questions such as which regions are more affected than uh, others uh, within the same country so that uh, policy makers can, can take more proactive uh, uh, resource allocations for adaptation. This is another example from the Philippines, uh, Phil Rice uh, uh, Research Institute did this study to highlight the uh, differentiated impacts of climate change on rain-fed rice uh, productivity. Uh, again, this highlights, they, they studied both rice and corn, uh, so that uh, the, the results are interesting. Some regions become more negatively impacted by rice, but uh, some positively impacted by corn, for example. So uh, the result is interesting uh, for Department of Agriculture uh, and its strat strategic uh, thinking in the future. This example is from Peru. This was uh, mainly done, done by tsunamis, uh, agrometeorologists, uh, National Weather Office. Uh, in the case of Peru, they looked at 15 different crops uh, to understand the differentiated impact among crops and uh, among uh, different uh, provinces within the country. In the presentations uh, yesterday and today, I have seen many studies looking at just uh, rice or, or, or one, two crops but uh, it may be very important to, to look at the effects of climate change on other crops too. The farmers who rely on just one crop may, uh, is usually more vulnerable to any weather shocks. Uh, uh, optimal uh, crop diversification is one of the uh, easiest uh, adaptation practices that can be done by farmers. And in order for, to, to promote such idea, we have to have a, a good idea of differentiated impacts of climate change on different crops. So uh, these uh, uh, studies uh, done in Peru and the Philippines uh, helped to answer some of the important questions uh, for policymakers, like how government can should allocate resources more strategically, how long-term agricultural development plan should be designed, how to formulate climate change adaptation projects, research and development directions, like uh, what kind of uh, uh, weather shock uh, tolerant varieties need to be uh, more studied, more researched, more uh, tested uh, in particular area. 
that kind of information can be drawn from uh, these mosaic studies. Um, we also uh, used this more top-down approach of climate change impact assessments using mosaic combined with a bottom-up approach of uh, vulnerability assessments as part of the project called AMICAF, uh, which was done in the Philippines and Peru as a first phase, and uh, Indonesia and Paraguay uh, in the second phase. <clears throat> um, yeah, just a few slides more. Uh, we, I, I would like to touch upon some innovations, and uh, I want to solicit uh, your ideas for uh, making accessible the innovative technologies uh, for smallholder farmers. We are, we are for making uh, small uh, steps towards that direction. This is an ongoing project in Macedonia, Georgia, Tajikistan to use real-time agrometeorological monitoring to uh, predict the, the risks of uh, plant diseases, working with plant pathologists and uh, national weather uh, services so that they can issue timely warning and advice to farmers. We are uh, promoting uh, mobile technologies, uh, smartphone app, and uh, uh, because we are working in Senegal and Rwanda, uh, the penetration of smartphone is not that high in the rural areas of these countries. So we also uh, need to use SMS to communicate, but we are trying to, to, to communicate the essential information on weather forecast, agrometeorological condition, and the farming advices like planting uh, date timing of uh, harvest, uh, timing of fertilizer application, and et cetera, using uh, mobile technology, which uh, the similar approach was mentioned by several speakers in the past, in, in yesterday and today, and there's, I think there's room for further collaboration here with FAO too. <clears throat> but uh, we are also uh, looking uh, beyond just, not just by communicating information by smartphone app. Maybe there's a room to, to take it further, uh, building a very good uh, feedback mechanism in the mobile app, like the farming diary or extension diary. Uh, another speaker uh, uh, talked about uh, this morning, and uh, using that, that collected data uh, for, for uh, further analysis, sort of like crowdsourcing of the data collected on the farm to making the advice more tailored and uh, more accurate for, for farmers' use. So uh, I want to go back to the, one of the first slides I talked about because uh, I want to highlight that the, the last two points about uh, adaptation practices appraisal and, uh, and monitoring and evaluation of adaptation interventions. This is an area I see still uh, more scientific research is uh, uh, needed. And uh, we, uh, we at FAO are uh, always looking for your ideas uh, uh, in these, these areas. <clears throat> so in summary, uh, I, I talked about promotion of evidence-based adaptation. Uh, policy makers, project formulators are looking for scientific information, but scientific information that's relevant to their uh, uh, ideas to, to, for their purposes. <clears throat> and uh, there is a huge role for scientific community to play, I think. And uh, I argue that uh, we should look at not only one, two crops, but m multiple crops and beyond uh, crop agriculture, but uh, also livestock, uh, aquaculture, fisheries, and those sectors. Uh, scales do, do matter. I mostly talked about the temporal scale of medium to long term, 
and uh, spatial scale of uh, uh, national and subnational levels, but uh, different stakeholders look for different uh, uh, scales. And the uh, scientific, scientific community is uh, uh, expected to, to address different scales. And uh, I, I touched upon stake, stakeholder involvement. I don't need to repeat. And uh, finally, I would like uh, uh, to, to you to contact me if you have any ideas for applying your scientific research uh, in FAO uh, projects. Uh, so I think there's a lot of room for collaboration uh, with us. So contact me if you have good ideas. Thank you.